Hi, Martha. How are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Uh, really excited to continue this career chat series. Uh, so where do you work and what do you do? Yeah, so I'm currently a machine learning engineer at a startup called P Pachama, um, and we're trying to restore nature with forest-based carbon credits. Um, so we're building tooling um, and bringing remote sensing into this marketplace to understand um, how projects should be credited to evaluate existing projects and to be able to originate and start our own high quality forest carbon credit projects, um, because we really can't save the planet without forests. 100% agree. Uh, that sounds like a really worthwhile uh, enterprise. And what is your particular role there? Yeah, I'm a machine learning engineer on the baseline team. So we um, are really, all the teams at Fashama are really interesting, but the baseline team is really exciting. We conduct research and then we kind of move it into a product that's used internally to help evaluate projects. Um, and it's also, our research is also used internally to help um, us as we originate and start our own projects. Right. So it's quite research focused, your your day-to-day -day activities. Yeah. Yeah. And what what kind of things do you do research on, if I can ask then? Yeah. So we're trying to understand um, what would happen if a carbon project doesn't exist to understand um, how it should be credited. And there's also teams that research um, how to quantify biomass from all different kinds of sensors with all different sorts of data, starting with like publicly available satellite imagery, um, higher resolution commercial satellite imagery, and also imagery from LIDAR. There's teams focused on land use, land cover change, and then also just trying to model what would happen in terms of deforestation um, in areas that have carbon projects as well as areas that don't have carbon projects. Um, and then something that's like really important across all of our different themes of research is like quantifying our models and bringing uncertainty into it because um, just to bring more transparency into the market. That's fascinating. Uh, I can see that would involve multiple people with various backgrounds to develop that that whole processing chain um yourself specifically you're focused on the modeling side or do you also get involved in some of the product side um it's a startup so i feel like you kind of touched a lot of different parts um i definitely do some modeling i do some data wrangling and also trying to think about like what data we should be bringing into our models um and also my team does research that's then um, hopefully used by another internal team. So making sure um, with the help of other people that that transition is smooth and like getting feedback and kind of like continuing, continuing to iterate on improving our research, but also kind of like bringing back the needs of our users and having people like um, help improve the tooling. Yeah, it's, that's one of the fun things about being at a startup is being involved in all aspects of it. I yeah. appreciate that. And in terms of the, the tools and techniques that you, you use in your day-to-day -day work, what kind of uh, tools are you using? Um, we're using a lot of open source tools. Um, we rely heavily on Dask and X-Array for data processing and data wrangling. Um, for workflow orchestration, we use an open source tool called Flight. We have some engineers that are really involved in the flight community, which is super exciting. Like they're making contributions like open source flight, which benefits like Pachama as well as other flight users. Um, so it's super cool to have people um, that you work with so involved in open source and kind of like the traditional geospatial open source as well we use like stack to facilitate visualizations um we have teammates that just built us like a super cool qgis plugin um since our data stack catalog it's really easy to bring it in in qgis for specific areas and do kind of like quick sanity check visualizations because we want to make sure we're bringing in data that's good and like correctly processed into our models because if you give your model bad data it's just not good yeah, it's <laughs> and you're day. confused yes that's it so very involved with open source and also contributing back that's really interesting to hear and uh what's your background do you you come from an academic background or uh, an engineering background how how did you get into this particular role 
Yeah. Um, so I studied geography in undergrad um, and geography is quite broad. And I think when I first approached it, I was interested in more of the policy side. And I was like, I want to work in the UN. Um, I don't, but I love my job um, and I have a lot of respect for people that do work in the policy side. Um, I studied abroad in Australia and I took like an environmental planning class and I thought that was really interesting. We use kind of like traditional ArcGIS software and I was like, what's happening behind the scenes when I click these buttons and I'm not the most patient person. So I was like, why is this so slow? Um, so then right. I kind of like went, yes, not to yeah, like, you said, on. I'm going to fix this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, I want to learn more about it. I don't know if I yeah. can fix it. Um, but I thought that class was just like, I appreciated the application that kind of had an environmental focus. So I like went back to university and there was kind of this whole other more quantitative side to geography that I started exploring. Um, and I also took some stats classes and some computer science classes. Um, and then actually my senior year, I was like kind of late to the game, but this was the first year they offered like an introductory data science course where I went to undergrad at Berkeley and it was like me and all these freshmen. <laughs> um, but I like loved it. And I was like, this is what I want to do, but with geographic data. Um, so I like did some like research projects um, my senior year and I thought like kind of like the academic research was really interesting. So I had the opportunity to go to grad school and kind of to continue to pursue that. Um, but then I did decide to not get a PhD and just leave after a master's degree. Um, and I was able to intern at Maxar, which kind of like pushed me into like the niche of satellite imagery, because before um, I was researching more with like vector data and open street maps data and kind of like how to model time like by commuting and predicted. Right. So it was partly a, a conscious shift towards the technical and then also, I guess, a bit of serendipity that you ended up at a satellite uh, imaging company. And yeah. um very cool. And in terms of the techniques that you felt you needed to, or the skills you needed to build up to lead into this machine learning engineering role, were there specific skills or techniques that you needed to, you know, sort of master, or did you you learn those during during the job? Um, I think like the statistical background was helpful, and I definitely learned a lot from like on the job and being mentored by people. Um, and I think having like a domain knowledge was really useful and kind of like understanding like what you're applying these models to and just kind of like a gut check and like understanding some of the nuances of geospatial data. But you can like obviously like pick that up as you learn as well. And then kind of like thinking through, it's more than just like you're using geospatial data, like thinking through like how your model is going to be used and like how it's going to be deployed and like how it's going to actually like impact people's lives is really important to keep in mind and kind of like harder to learn at school and like just kind of like you learn it on the job. Yeah. So mostly learning on the job uh, and also at university. Did you yeah. also get involved in open source? Was that a part of the equation? Um, I think a little bit. I don't know how you like can't and be in the geospatial world. There's mm. so many um, great packages. I feel like I'm more of like a question asker and less of like an active contributor on the code side because there's only so much time in the day. But if I could multiply hours, I would contribute more code to open source projects. Yeah, uh, we'll wish for more hours in the day to do that. Yes. <laughs> one day. Fantastic. And if you had, uh, I guess, as a parting thought, one one piece of advice for somebody that's maybe a geographer, say, and they they also want to, you know, follow this sort of path, would you have a particular piece of advice for them? Yeah, just follow what you're passionate about. And the climate change space is like growing so much. Um, talented people are definitely needed to help make a difference on the planet. So please come join us. Right. And are there open roles at Pachamara as well? um i think so it's on our website fantastic I'll, I'll post a link in the the show notes as well well thank you so much for catching up with me to talk about your career history and i hope uh hope to hear from you in the future uh as well thank you bye then <laughs>